Hi there, I'm Michael Legiblin with FiddlerShop.com and today we're talking about the MirrorCore self-adjusting bridges. I'm going to talk about kind of the pros and cons, but how to measure for the size that you need. So if you're not familiar with these bridges, they're a very do-it-yourself option for bridge replacement. They're pre-cut, they already have the string grooves, notches, and the top of the curve, and the feet have a little swivel, so they self-adjust to the arch of your violin. Of course, I'm of two minds on this. On one hand, it's an incredibly affordable and easy option. And if your bridge broke and you need something to get back up and running because you have a gig tomorrow, this could really save the day. It might also be nice to have one of these just living in your case as a backup in case something goes wrong. And I think on student level instruments or cheaper instruments, you're probably not gonna notice a big difference in sound quality. Now. On the other hand, it's not the best way to do things. Um, if you take your violin to a luthier, they can really tailor fit the bridge to the needs of your instrument, taking into account the angle, the curve of the top of the violin, taking to the angle of projection uh, from the fingerboard. And in a, in a world where, in a world where, sorry, where fractions of millimeters matter, these things make a difference. I think one of the best analogies I can come up with is that if you have a flat tire, you can patch or plug the tire for a couple dollars and probably be back up and running and you might be able to drive on it for quite a long time and never notice the difference. However, if you take it to the tire shop, you, know, you can get a new tire, one that's like perfect to begin with, and they'll also you know, align the tire and do all the things so that everything you don't have to worry about it it's really the best best way to do it it's kind of like that it's not really the best analogy I probably shouldn't compare us to tire salesmen but hopefully you get the idea anyways let's talk about what size bridge to order the best way is if you have the old bridge even if it's warped or broken you can measure part of it is that you need to measure from the bottom of the foot to the E string side and also the bottom of the foot to the G string side and then look at this lovely chart to know which size bridge you need. Now this is at least going to get you in the ballpark. Maybe the old bridge wasn't the best fit for your instrument. Maybe the string height was too low or maybe it was too high, but at least it'll give you a starting point. If you don't have the old bridge and you just have a violin that looks like this, just naked, it's a little bit more of a challenge. You could just guess. It's not the best option. I'm going to show you how to measure and it helps if you have two rulers, but one ruler and something ruler-like would probably also work. We wanna get started by placing the first ruler or a similar object on the fingerboard right in the middle and so that it's flush with the fingerboard. While leaving that one in place, we wanna now take our second ruler and lining it up with the lower notches of the F hole. We wanna follow that imaginary line to the center so that it meets the second ruler. And we wanna look at this intersection. Write down this number where the two rulers intersect, but we're not quite done yet, there's one more step. This number is where the fingerboard would meet the bridge, and so we need to add on some height so that the strings are above the fingerboard. For the E string, we need to add 3.75 millimeters, and for the G string, we need to add 5.75 millimeters. Now that you have the measurements for the E string and the G string side, look at the chart to see which bridge is the closest to your measurements. You probably have to round either down or up to the nearest size. If you're right in the middle, we often err on the side of getting the higher bridge because we can always remove some bridge, but you can't add any more bridge. The only danger is that if you get too high of a bridge, it might be difficult to push the strings down, but too low of a bridge, you might get some buzzing where the strings are hitting the fingerboard. So there's still a little bit of wiggle room. All right, hopefully that is everything you ever needed to know about the self-adjusting bridges. The link for them is in the description box below. And if you need any other supplies or instruments, Fiddler Shop is your source. We look forward to seeing you at our shop here in South Florida, or we ship anything you need worldwide. Thanks so much. We look forward to seeing you at FiddlerShop.com. I hope that was important. In a world where the smallest differences matter, one man must self-adjust in a race against time and the metric system. Vic, these bridges are too low. I can't do it, man. I need more millimeters. Regina, tell me you got those higher bridges. I can't get you 3.5 millimeters. Come on, we don't have time for this. I think I got it.
Okay, the asset is secure. I'm on my way out. Wait, what's going on? Ah! Ah! What is happening to me? Why is there a banana duct tape to this violin? The banana is the idea. <laughs>